My name is Matthew Peters. I'm a third year internal medicine resident at Tulane University School of Medicine. I'm the first author on a recently accepted manuscript to Mayo Clinic Proceedings titled Natural Disasters and Myocardial Infarction, the six years after Hurricane Katrina. This manuscript was a follow-up of, of two previous articles we'd, we'd written. Uh, we had noticed that in the first three years after Hurricane Katrina, there was a mark, marked increase in the number of myocardial infarctions occurring in our population. We also noticed that during those same three years, there was a marked variation in terms of when these heart attacks were occurring. Traditionally, heart attacks are more common during mornings, weekdays, Mondays. Times of the day and week, they're traditionally associated with more stress um, than other times of the week, like nights and weekends. So the goal of this study was to see if this effect persisted. We initially looked at the first three years and had shown by year three no sign of returning to the pre-Katrina levels. So we wanted to look at years four through six post-Hurricane Katrina to see if these effects persisted during that time. So we found that largely these effects did persist. Uh, incidents actually continued to increase. Prior to Hurricane Katrina, about 0.7% of the patients we were treating in our medical center were suffering from myocardial infarctions. This increased to about 2%, or about two and a half fold in the first three years after Hurricane Katrina, and continued to increase to almost 3% in years four through six. So in terms of the timing of heart attacks, we looked at when they occur. Traditionally, heart attacks occur during more stressful times of the day and the week. These could be weekdays, they could be mornings, they could be Mondays. What we saw in the first three years after Hurricane Katrina was that the heart attacks began to occur much less frequently during these Mondays, mornings, and weekdays, and much more commonly during nights and weekends. During years four through six, these patterns largely continued as they had in the first three years after Katrina. Uh, the only exception was nights began to revert somewhat back to the pre-Katrina levels in terms of how frequently heart attacks occurred, but still did not quite reach that level of pre-Katrina. So I think largely these effects just continued as we'd seen in the first three years after Hurricane Katrina. There's really two main ways it relates to clinical practice. One is from sort of a pathophysiological standpoint, and one is from a practical implication standpoint. For a pathophysiological standpoint, stress has long been known to be a risk factor for heart disease and for heart attacks in particular. Um, there's been previous studies that have shown that uh, stress has this equivalent risk of hypertension or obesity. Unemployment can have equivalent risk of, of risk factors like diabetes and stroke, which is a very, very big predictor for having heart attacks. Um, this shows that from a pathophysiological standpoint, that stress may actually outweigh some of the uh, normal daily timing rhythms of uh, of human beings, basically what we call circadian rhythm. Um, things like platelet aggregation, which are the parts of our blood that, can, that cause clotting, um, occur more frequently during mornings, as do cortisol and catecholamines, which are basically the human stress response. Those are more common during the mornings, as well as heart rate and blood pressure. And this shows that stress can actually probably lead to other peaks um, besides just the morning, which is what led to the uptick in night, nighttime and, and weekend heart attacks, as opposed to just the traditional morning ones. From a practical standpoint, I think it's very important for hospitals to realize that after a natural disaster, heart attacks can occur, uh, can be occurring more frequently in nights and weekends. These are times when hospitals are much, um, much less staffed than they are during the, the week. Um, and traditionally, um, mortality following a heart attack is higher on nights and weekends. Um, what we call door to balloon time, which is basically from when the patient presents to the hospital to when we actually are able to go and open up the, uh, the blocked artery, I tend to be longer on nights and weekends. So I think it's important from a hospital staffing standpoint to be prepared for this large potential influx of increased heart attacks during what we call off hours um, following a natural disaster. I think it's important to recognize the patients realize that they're going to have an increased level of stress following a natural disaster. And typically, people wake up on Monday morning to go to work and are feeling very stressed out, and that's been long known to be a major risk factor for heart attacks. I think after Hurricane Katrina, the stress was, act was actually increased even more on nights and weekends because in many cases, those patients that still had jobs it actually served as a distraction from life, whereas once they came home from work, returned to home to the, to the point where they see that they, their housing's been gone, that many of their loved ones have moved away due to lack of resources, it actually became more stressful for them to move back to come back from work at the end of the day or be at home for the whole weekend. They're sort of forced to face their problems. So I think it's important for patients to recognize that they're going to be, they're going to be subjected to increased stress from what they normally would, and it's not just the typical stress they'd be subjected to. I also think it's important for patients to recognize that after a natural disaster, it may be very difficult for them to access health care. Um, this isn't something you can necessarily prepare for, but I think as sort of a city, from a city standpoint, to have uh, plans in place for what would happen how can patients get their medications? How can they continue to see, see uh, doctors after, in the wake of a natural disaster where resources are severely limited?
So I think that the main takeaway from this study is that the impact of natural disasters on health and really on the cardiovascular system in general is enormous. I think that, it's, that our study shows that this can persist for a number of years. And in many cases, government resources are sent to aid, aid people in the immediate aftermath of a, of a natural disaster. But I think that we're seeing that these effects can really persist and last for a long amount of time. We're now six years out in terms of how many of the data we've looked at, and with very, very few uh, exceptions, we're seeing that these patterns are continuing and st continuing to persist all the way through. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.